Dunray also made a major contribution to knowledge about sodium water reactions as they affect fast reactors. Supernoa, a test rig was built at Dunray to investigate reactions under controlled conditions. And in 1987, an actual sodium leak in a PFR steam generator unit provided direct experience of what happens when sodium and steam meet under operating conditions. Perhaps the most significant obstacle arose in the summer of 1991. An oil leak contaminated the primary sodium circuit, a serious problem which closed the reactor for 18 months. To solve it, the PFR engineers were faced with the mammoth task of removing and replacing the primary pump filters, units which are normally immersed in the opaque sodium coolant. Many thought PFR would never start up again, but by the end of 1992, the problem was solved and PFR was back on power. It was particularly appropriate that in its final period of operation, PFR achieved its highest load factor ever and in its last year of operation set a new production record. But the decision had been taken to shut down the innovative PFR on the 31st of March, drawing to a conclusion the UK government's fast reactor development programme. But sadly, as you will all know by now, tomorrow will be the last... On Wednesday, the 30th of March, Tony Broomfield, Reactor Services Business Director, welcomed over 200 people to a gathering at Dunray to mark the occasion. Staff, past and present, many who had devoted the greater part of their working lives to fast reactor research and development, colleagues from other countries, registering the international contribution made by the UK programme, and representatives of the many companies who had supported the project. Sir John Hill, a former chairman of the Atomic Energy Authority, looked back at the fast reactor story with some humour, much pride and some regrets. Two sites were considered for DFR, Speyside and Dunray. When Speyside was visited, it poured with rain and blew a gale. It was de declared unsuitable. When Dunray was visited, the sun shone all day. It was declared an excellent site, and DFR was sited at the end of the runway. The economic environment of, the, of today does not, however, permit you or any other fast reactor team to go ahead with a full commercial plant. It is very sad, but it's a fact. It's also a fact that you cannot for too long keep a project running in neutral. And if there is no project of the next step taking place in a reasonable time, the people concerned become dispirited. Better to stop and pick it up again or let your successors pick it up again when the climate has changed. PFR has been a great success. Over the 20 years in which it has operated, it has done everything that was hoped of it and almost everything of which it is capable. It is a great pity that the government did not give it time to make to complete its job, particularly as it is now running so well and covering so much of its costs from the sale of electricity. It is therefore with great sadness that we have to accept that the time has now come for it to go into honourable retirement. Tony Broomfield also had mixed feelings. I personally don't wish to dwell on the decisions and the circumstances that have brought a premature end to this project, particularly at a time when so much is being achieved. Within the UK, we have always maintained close links with the nuclear utilities. We have benefited from the presence of attached staff from these companies and for whose help we are grateful. With our colleagues in the European Partnership, and in other countries pursuing fast reactor development that are here represented, we have maintained close links on operational matters. And today we have staff from France and Japan working at PFR. Staff from PFR have similarly worked overseas. And today we have two at the Monju site in Japan in the team in the final stages of taking Monju critical. The operations teams in the European Partnership have worked very closely together. With the EFR design teams and development teams, they have maximised the transfer of experience. The collaboration, in our view, 
has worked very well. Since 1978, the general public has been provided with the opportunity to visit PFR. Up to 7,000 visitors each year have taken up this opportunity. All of us engaged in nuclear operations must play their part in demystifying what we do and in reassuring the public of our confidence in the safety of operations. In this, the PFR team has played its part. I would like to thank the PFR team. Brian Eyre had Every further day. praise for the PFR team. As has already been stressed today, we shouldn't underestimate the technical achievements, particularly those that have come out of our experience on PFR. They extend over a very wide range in understanding and managing irradiation damage problems such as void swelling and irradiation creep, in achieving outstanding fuel performance and demonstrating the complete fuel cycle, in understanding thermohydraulics and heat transfer problems, in developing sophisticated but effective instrumentation and plant condition monitoring systems, and in understanding the complex behavior and failure processes in the materials used and developing uh, effective solutions to those problems. And I could undoubtedly go on. We still have much to contribute. First, we must ensure that all of the knowledge and experience we've won is not lost. The information from PFR on the fuel cycle, on the experience of components and systems performance, and on the overall operating experience, all of this is particularly valuable. We must also make sure that the continuing information we'll get from PFR in the future is used effectively. From the reprocessing of the fuel, which will continue for some years, and in fact will provide unique experience in the recycling of high burn-up fast reactor fuel, and of course from the decommissioning program. And we will also continue to exploit the technology, the accumulated technology that we've developed from PFR in other areas. And thus, we in the UK will continue to make a significant and important contribution to fast reactor technology, and we must continue to maintain our links with our international colleagues. PFR is a prototype plant, and as such, it's highlighted a range of technical problems and issues. This is a key aspect of operating a prototype plant. Many of these have been very novel and different issues from an engineering viewpoint. And I've seen at close hand over the last 12 years or so the work that's been done to address and solve these problems. And in my view, this has resulted in some of the highest quality and most innovative engineering I've seen. I believe also that the dedication and commitment shown by Ed Adam and his PFR team in implementing these engineering solutions has been absolutely outstanding. Dr. Eyre, Sir John Hill and Station Manager Ed Adam joined a party of PFR personnel in the reactor's control room. The 12 long-serving members of the engineering and operations team, between them, represent 300 years of service at PFR. This afternoon, PFR is operating at a power of 637 megawatts. Tomorrow evening, we have to shut down PFR and disconnect the turbine alternator from the grid. The process will take about four hours tomorrow evening. But this afternoon, we are going to start the lowering of the power of the reactor. And I'm going to ask the senior shift manager, Gordon Blagden, to start that process. The shutdown of PFR is a carefully planned, precisely controlled procedure. The mechanism for lowering each control rod is selected in turn on the control panel. The illumination of the buttons confirms that each command has been actioned. When all five control rods are primed, a sixth button is depressed to lower them. The rod's rate of descent is regulated manually by the operator. The gradual power decrease is monitored closely by the control room team. A poignant moment for a group of people who have dedicated most of their working lives to the innovative prototype fast reactor project. The fast reactor project has been a success story and PFR has made a substantial contribution by demonstrating the ability to achieve fuel performance in excess of twice the design target 
in operation of high efficiency steam generator units and by generating over 9 billion units of electricity. Although the curtain has come down on the British fast reactor program, operation of fast reactor plants continues in France with Phoenix and Super Phoenix, in Kazakhstan with BN350, in Russia with BN600, and in Japan where the startup of Mongju will mark the beginning of a new era. I am sure that future generations will require fast reactor technology for two reasons. Firstly, to generate power as fossil fuel stocks dwindle and the more efficient use of uranium is demanded. And secondly, to manage increasing plutonium stocks by using that plutonium as fuel, something fast reactors do efficiently. When the time comes to rekindle the flame in Britain, I'm confident that those concerned will benefit greatly from the experience and knowledge gained over the last 35 years. Thank you.